Good morning, good morning. Happy Easter, everyone. Can you believe it? I can't believe it's April already. And yeah, we're having our Easter long weekend, which is amazing. I love, love, love Easter weekend because four days, it just gives you extra time. You know, with the time you sort of remember that it was a long weekend and you kind of just wasted it. You realize you've got a whole nother day tomorrow, which is fantastic. Uh, also for us on the East Coast, of course, we lost daylight savings today. Wow, I do love daylight savings. That means the year with the time <laughs> is a changing. Um, so I hope you got to enjoy an extra hour's sleep today. I did reminisce yesterday about uh, that Sunday night at 3 a.m. when the cocks go back and remember the old days when it used to mean an extra day in the clubs. Do you remember that as well? <laughs> um, if you don't know who I am, my name is Paul, uh, Scissors Paper Paul on Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. Make sure you're following me on all of those different channels, uh, all of the projects that we normally do when I go live. I always have got a pinned post on my Facebook page and I share all of the links to the projects there. Um, also, if you like this video, please, please, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and you won't miss out on any of my content going forward. Thank you to all of those who have subscribed. It means the world to me. You have no idea. I've just passed 2,400 uh, subscribers, which is just blows my mind. Um, so thank you, thank you, thank you. And please, of course, feel free to uh, share this uh, video across the socials as well. So today, what are we going to be doing today? We're going to be doing a really, really fun project, which it's really, really, um, this is a great technique. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some of my son's artwork of a picture he drew of his um, other father. And we're gonna turn it into a sticker. We're gonna use the offset feature, but you don't have to use the offset feature. This is just a really great technique and getting that so those projects into Cricut Design Space. And it's also the same technique that I use when uploading handwriting as well. So we're gonna, that's what we're gonna look at today. So let me know in the comments. If you're new, type new so I can get to meet you. Uh, you can ask me any questions today. It doesn't have to be about Print Thin Cut, but of course, if you have a question about Print Thin Cut, this is the time to ask me, okay? Because I'm going to answer all of your questions. Hopefully, we'll answer a lot of them along the way anyway. Um, but let me know. Do you use Print Thin Cut? What do you use it for? Do you make stickers, planner stickers? What are you using it for at the moment? Um, again, let me know in the comments, and I'd love to hear from you. So let's jump into the comments before we get started. Hi Kay, happy Easter. Thanks for joining me. It's Easter Sunday, so I really appreciate it guys for taking the time to, to be with me for, you know, maybe an hour. And, um, you know, I know I've got better things to do. Again, let me know in the comments, what are you doing today? Are you celebrating? How are you celebrating? Um, however you're celebrating, happy Easter to you. Hey Angela, thanks for being here. Hey Karen, Suzette's here. Um, brilliant, really, really, um, yeah, so good to have you all here and Joy's here as well. I love your name, Joy Pepper. What a gorgeous name. Okay, so let's go to the overhead and we'll talk about what we need for our project. So first we need some artwork. <laughs> and this you can see I've uh, um, grabbed it off the wall. This, I just thought this was such a cute little picture that my son drew and I thought, you know, he's screaming it out to be a little sticker that I can give to my partner, well, yeah, my um, Layton's other dad. And um, yeah, he can stick them all over his bits and pieces, however he wants. So that's the artwork they're going to be using today. Very important. The other thing, of course, is we need something to print onto. And I'm using printable vinyl. This is the Cricut printable vinyl. Now you can use this, of course, on your Explore machines as well as the Maker. One thing to note with the Cricut Maker is you can also print then cut onto colored materials and some patterned materials. So I've done some lighter uh, colors, nothing too outrageous, but I've certainly printed onto shimmer cardstock and it, you know, gave an absolutely beautiful effect. So this is the one I'm using printable vinyl. Uh, I have taken out a couple of sheets already. Uh, reason being is because you want to make sure these are really flat. And what I find is sometimes in spotlight, you can move that out so it doesn't distract everyone reflecting the light. Um, when it's stored in spotlight, sometimes it can be a little bit curled and you really want this to be flat so that it goes through your printer um, nice and smoothly. Now, I did grab two sheets because knowing my luck, we're live, 
it's probably not going to work the first time. So I've got a second just in case I need to reprint it. <laughs> um, the other thing that I wanted to share with you as well, uh, of course, Cricut printable vinyl has Cricut and the grid on the back. But uh, some of the printable vinyls that you might get elsewhere, they may not. Now, one of the common um, things that I see in the groups sometimes is my ink is smearing. Now, there could be a multitude of reasons for that with your printer. Um, but what I can tell you is sometimes it's because you've printed on the back of the vinyl, which is much shinier and basically it's just going to smear and be an absolute hot mess. So just bear that in mind. Make sure you are printing onto the correct side. And if you need to, you can always pick up a little corner and just work out where is the adhesive, what's the adhesive actually, what part is it actually on, and uh, that will obviously tell you which part you're printing onto. Loving the support. Thank you, Suzette. Um, uh, Joy's not new, but new to print then cut. Okay, excellent. All right. Well, again, Joy, let me know if you've got any questions. Um, the other thing that I've got here as well is my uh, Cricut Brayer. Now, you'll see me why I use this. Well, you'll see me use this. The reason that I use the Brayer when I'm putting the uh, printed copy onto my mat is because that way I'm not using my hands and potentially smearing that ink. Um, you want to make sure, of course, the ink's nice and dry, but I don't want to sort of be, you know, rubbing at it and saying, oh, is it dry? Oh, no, it's not, and I've made a hot mess. Again, so the Braille will just help us put that firmly onto the mat without, you know, smearing or transferring ink and doing anything strange like that. And, of course, you use a mat. So I've got a blue mat today, um, and I have uh, – just go back to the main screen. So I've kind of pushed you guys back a little bit today because I want you to see something of what's actually happening uh, when we're – doing the printing. Okay, are we ready? So this is what we're going to do. I'm getting fancy today. So let me go into my iPad and I'm going to show you exactly what I do. So normally I would just use my phone for this, um, but of course you can you use your iPad or you know, whatever device you're going to use to, to take the picture. Now, today is not going to be great because I've got cameras up here. I've got lights on overhead, which are casting shadows. I've got weird shadows coming in from my window as well. But effectively, you want to make sure you're in a really nice, bright area where you're not casting shadows onto your artwork or the thing you're photographing. You want it, particularly if it's on white, you want it really bright and white because that's just going to make it so much easier for you when you're cleaning up your project. So... Let's jump into the camera. Okay, and I'm just going to center over my drawing. Make sure he's focused. Then take my photo. Now, I'm going to go into my photos. I'm going to click edit. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to crop this image. Basically, we just want to get rid of all the garbage that we just don't need, that we're ultimately going to remove anyway. Um, so we just want to kind of get that edge a little bit closer. And the other thing that I want to do as well, I want to make sure that this outside is as white as it can be. Now you can see, I'll try and sort of highlight there, you can see there's a little bit of banding again because I've got that shadow. So this is not an ideal image, but we're going to go with it anyway. Um, and yeah, so we just want to remove as much as we can already. But what I'm going to do is I just want to brighten it and I'm just going to take this up to like vivid and you can see already, well, Hopefully, did you see that? Yep. So you can see here that obviously the color is a little bit brighter, that white's a little bit whiter, and that will definitely make it easier when we go through and clean it up. Now, I'm going to click Done, and that's that part done, and then I'm going to open the Cricut Design Space app. Um, you can obviously, you know, you could transfer that image now to your desktop, and you can do this on your desktop, absolutely. I find cleaning up images much easier to do in the app. And the reason being is it has a smooth feature as well, which we're actually going to look at. But what we're looking for is down the very bottom. So down, and we'll try and wiggle around it. Right down here, we've got a little upload button. <laughs> you didn't know. We're going to click upload, and then we get the check. We could have taken the photo directly from the app, but we're just going to choose from photo library. We're going to choose our image, and we'll bring that. Um, in now so you can see it's kind of all sort of gray it looks a bit weird and you can also see a preview on that top right corner so uh what that's telling us is actually currently if i uploaded this it's just a black square because we haven't removed anything so it's not seeing anything 
in this image at the moment. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to the bottom and we're going to choose the remove wand. Now you can see there are other options. You can crop, you can also use the eraser to remove specific parts, but I'm just going to click the little magic eraser and you can see we've got um, some options to make it kind of you know, basically larger and smaller in terms of what it's going to, how detailed it's going to be when we're removing um, those elements. Um, and it just says there, tap the areas that you want to remove. So you can imagine, like, I'm just going to start tapping around the outside. Look at the little black box on the top right. Um, oh, what happened there? Oh, so not previewing. Always happens. I did test this earlier, didn't we? So I'm just going to jump forward. Oh, I think my settings have gone. I've changed my setting. I think I've somehow I've changed the settings on this iPad, but this effectively should be white, this black part, but that's basically what it's cutting out. And that's obviously impacting my preview. So I'm sorry. Normally you would see everything that's being removed cut out from that black square. Try it on home. I promise it does work. I just went and changed the settings on this with dark and light mode. And I think I've, I've mucked that up. Um, but you can also just keep clicking around. So if you've got text, you'd want to remove um, the internal parts of letters, things like that. Um, and effectively just clean it up until you're happy with it. We can move to the next screen. Um, and oh God, I apologize that I don't know. I don't have, sorry, I'm so sorry about this. No good deed goes unpunished. But the thing that I wanted to talk about was smooth. And again, you can't see this. I don't know what I've done here. But if I click, click, keep hitting smooth um, what it does is it just smooths out any um, uh, jagged edges any sharp edges it just makes it a little bit smoother now particularly if you're doing handwriting uh, what you want to be mindful of is um, that if it's quite detailed and it was originally detailed when you uploaded it you you really want to use the smooth feature because it will just make it cut so much better particularly if you're using iron-on or vinyl. Um, you don't want it, the machine going ee, 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 cutting around every little sort of um, jagged edge. You want it to be a little bit smoother. So the smooth function. So sorry you can't see it. I do <laughs> ask you this afternoon. Jump and upload a photo you'll, or an image. You'll, you'll see it's, it's very self-explanatory. Um, but effectively, then we go through next. Um, the one thing is going to choose as a cut image or as printing cut image. We would save it with a name. Uh, of our image and then we would save it yep and that would upload it into design space um, so I did test this today to make sure everything was working on screen but then I went and changed my son's um, screensaver and all that stuff hey Naomi welcome thanks for being here happy Easter to you too so what we'll do is we'll get rid of that and jump into Cricut design space We'll move our artwork out the way now. And we will go to... Uh, so this asking if Smooth's available on the computer. No, it's not. On the computer, you have uh, you can play around with tolerances and things like that. Um, and they will give you effectively the same effect. And that's why I think it's easier to use the iPad or the app, not like today. Um, but it's much easier because that Smooth function is gold it just makes everything lovely and beautiful um, so we're going to jump into Cricut Design Space I'm going to go up and select new project and then down the bottom on the left I've got upload so I'm going to click on upload and I'll be able to see all of the images either obviously I can upload an image or I can see all of the images that I've uploaded already and you can see I've got some handwriting in here as well um, but we're going to select this one now he's going to come in quite large and that's fine because we're just going to clean him up and make sure that we're happy with him before um, we send him to print and cut. So I'm going to go in now and use the offset feature. So we could we could cut this out totally, not a problem at all, but I'm going to use the offset. So we're going to have a little sort of white outline around him. So on the top here, the new feature on desktop only with offset. And I can kind of see on my screen that sort of outline and what that's going to look like. I'm pretty happy with that. I could increase or decrease the size of that um, uh, uh, offset. Uh, I can also make it hard corners if I wanted to, um, but that's just a hot mess. So definitely want it nice and curved. And then I'm going to click apply. Now, when you use the offset and you click apply, by default, it changes to black. 
So I'm going to, on the right hand side, select my black layer. And then on the top, near operation and print then cut, I'm going to change the color to white. So difficult to see, but I'm going to be another little tip if you are new. Down the bottom right, under blank canvas, if I click on that white square, on the top and the middle now, I can see color. I can actually choose a different color for the uh, canvas. So now I can see that white outline and exactly what it's going to look like. But we're not quite there yet because our uploaded image that we saved as a print then cut, that's going to want to print and the offset is going to want to cut. And that sounds great, except that it's not together. They can still completely separate. Um, my colored layer is one layer and my offset is another layer. So we need to combine them. But for print then cut, so that it actually prints and then cuts it out together, we've got two layers on the top right you can see there, the printable image and also the, um, the uh, offset. We're going to select all and we're going to come down to the very bottom. On the right hand side we can see flatten and we're going to flatten those two layers together. And now you can see on the right, the very top, we've got one layer. And that is exactly what we want. We know it's going to print this image and then it's going to cut around this image. Does that all make sense? All right, again, let me know in the comments if it doesn't. Next thing we want to do is we're going to resize this. I've kind of been having a bit of a think about this and I'm going to make them about two and a half inches um, tall. Um, and pretty much we are ready to go. So what I would also normally do when I was doing a print then cut is I would click make it. And in my make it screen, obviously I want more than one sticker. I would increase the quantity here. So I can either use the up and down arrows or I can put a number in and I can click apply. Now, what you can see here is I've got six on one page and then I've got a second page with two. Now, I think I can get eight onto the one page. So here's another little tip for you. If you're not kind of getting those results that you want. I'm going to command uh, C, or if you're on a PC, control C, or right click and copy. <laughs> uh, and then I'm going to command V or control V to paste. And I want eight copies. So I've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a shape. I'm going to grab a square. I'm going to move this over here to the right. And I'm going to unlock the dimension. So this little padlock on the bottom left, I'm going to unlock that. And now it's going to let me resize the height and the width uh, separately rather than keeping those dimensions as a square. So width, I'm going to do 6.75 inches and height, I'm going to do 9.25 inches. Now I know that that is the maximum uh, size that you can have for a print then cut image. Okay, so I'm using this as a template. Now what I can do is like, well, first I'll right click as well and I'm going to send this to back. So it's right in the back of my canvas. Now I'm going to take my little stickers and I'm just going to position them um, how I think they'll best um, fit within this little template. So I'm just going to move them around. Just keep popping them on here. Uh, make sure they're actually in my template. And this is, as you can see now, I quite easily get eight of those uh, stickers on the one sheet. So I don't normally have to do this, but on some cases I do. So now I'm going to select the background layer and I'm going to delete that because I don't need that anymore. But as these how it thinks it wants it needs to so I'm going to use command a or control a or I can use my mouse and just drag and select all and I'm going to attach and attach down the bottom right that's like a paper clip okay attach will just hold everything as it is on your screen now when I click make it I've got everything on one page Right, and that's exactly what I want to happen. So I'm going to click continue. And now I'm also going to send to printer. So I'm going to click send to printer. And we've got this little printer setup box that's popped up, right? Now, 
uh, there is by default is the bleed option. Now I've got a white outline around these so the bleed's not going to make any difference at all. If you have a coloured outline that you're cutting, doesn't matter what it is, whether it's an offset or whatever it is, um, you've got a different cut, you're cutting into a colour, turn the bleed on and what that means is that you will get some ink that will go just beyond the actual um, barrier or the outside of your actual image and that means if your printing cuts a little bit off it's not going to be noticeable because you'll have that little sort of buffer that little bit of color that comes around so I always recommend just leaving it on the other thing that I'm going to do and I and I absolutely recommend this is click on the system dialog box now you're not going to be able to see what happens I don't know why this never never shares um, but the system dialog box that is going to bring up the really detailed settings for your actual printer. So I'm going to click print. Now, bizarrely, it comes down, it comes behind Cricut Design Space. So I'm just going to move Cricut Design Space. And unfortunately, again, you can't see what I'm seeing. Um, but effectively, this is where I can choose the media quality, where I want my um, printable to feed through. So I'm choosing feed from the rear tray. Now, if you are looking for a printer and you want to do printables like this, I 100% recommend getting one with a rear tray. That means that your paper is not going through multiple rollers and therefore curling and doing weird and wonderful things. It is literally going through nice and straight, uh, straight through your printer. So I would absolutely 100% recommend you do that. The other thing that I do is with media type and all of these things are normally just auto, but with media type, I choose photo paper. And then if it's a matte printable, I'll choose matte paper. If it's a glossy printable, I'll choose glossy paper, uh, print, yeah, paper, photo paper. That is what I use every single time. You're going to get a really saturated image with really great colors when you do that, because with photos, of course, normally they're really, you know, your printer's injecting a lot of color to achieve that. So that's what I'm going to select. And then I'm going to click, uh, print. There is also the option there for quality, which is, you know, low normal best when you select photo matte or glossy or whatever paper it will default to uh, best but you want it to be best and then i'm going to click print and then i'll move design space back up here again now i am just going to have to go off camera um, you'll hear my printer beep because there's no paper in it and it's trying to obviously feed so i'm going to pop over there and I'm going to put in my printable paper. So just bear with me while I do that. All right, so that's uh, now printing off. So let me just jump in and check uh, some comments. Thanks, Wendy, for helping Suzette. <laughs> Not sure what you said there. Um, great, Brenton. Again, if you're having any problems, you can contact me through Scissors Paper Paul on Instagram or Facebook. I'm more than happy to answer any other questions as well. Um, Wendy's saying that she's found if my Cricut window is on full screen, the print window sometimes comes in front. Okay, that's a good tip. Mine isn't on full screen and I can't at the moment because I resize it so that you can, I can share it within my software. Uh, Joy, making it look easy. Look, as I say, I've done this live before and it's completely mucked up when I printed it and I've had to do it again. Um, it's just trial and error. I've made many, many mistakes and hopefully that's why I'm here. I make the mistakes and I tell you how you can avoid them. <laughs> hopefully. Um, yes. Uh, the, I don't know why the printer menu pops up and you can't see it, but it's there. So just move your design space out of the way and you'll see it. Um, excellent. I'm glad that everyone's enjoying those tips. I'm going to um, go and grab the printable. And I'm also going to change the overhead. We'll get our mat ready. I'm just going to unplug. Don't need that anymore. It's very distracting for those bright lights. Okay. A little stickies. 
obviously you can't see the white because it's not actually going to print the white because it's on a, a white uh, substrate. Um, but there are my little stickers. The registration marks is what your machine is going to read. Now you can't do this on the Joy, I think I mentioned that earlier, explore and make a machines only. Uh, the next tip, and I just want to call this out before um, I actually do the application because um, I just realized my earphones on, so I apologize if you've been listening to that. <laughs> um, I I just want to call this out because I, I, I might have to kind of sort of bring this down so that I can put my design on. But what you now want to really, really focus on, okay? Now, I know other people, apparently they don't do this and it still works for them. But for me, what I'm telling you to do, make sure and take the time to line your printable up on the very top and also on this left hand side. Doesn't matter what side of the mat because that goes in both ways, but don't have it in the middle here. Don't have it halfway down. Have it right up in this top corner and really take your time to make sure that that is lined up. So that's what we're gonna do next. Oh, nice new mat feels. My, my other one I've been using for a while now is so dirty and I thought, oh my God, I can't believe I've been using that on camera. So I might have to do another video soon about uh, cleaning mats. <laughs> All right, so here we go. And this is where normally I would be, obviously I'm standing, my desk is, is raised. Normally I would be looking up and over this, again, making sure that I'm nailing it on that, uh, that top left and uh, top line. So I sort of focus right up here first. Uh, here. Sorry, I'm getting my head in the way. There we go. I'm happy with that, I think. Yep, that's pretty good. And this is where my um, my uh, my brayer comes in. So I can just give that a nice brayer and it's nice and stuck down. And you can see I've not smeared any ink, nothing like that. Again, do make, you know, give your printer time to, um, um, let's get that out of the way as well. Uh, give your printer time to dry, you know, to dry, but you know, mine, mine's pretty good. I have an Epson Workforce 7725. It is a huge printer. I only use it for printables. If you are going to do a lot of printables, I would suggest maybe looking at something like an eco tank or something like that. Um, but you know, that's completely up to you. Um, all right, so let's jump back into the design space and let's move this down a wee bit so it looks a bit weird there um, and we're going to choose our substrate so what are we actually printing onto uh, I've got printable vinyl saved as a favorite but basically you just choose the material that you want I'm going to select that and now it's obviously connecting to my, sh my machine so we'll go back out to the wide and then because I want you to be able to see um, obviously you've got the flashing load button so we're going to take our mat and again there is, there's a teeny tiny little bit of wiggle room between the two guides, okay? So normally I try and just get it, and we're talking like a millimeter probably each side, but I do try and sort of get it in the middle. That's my personal choice. I don't know if it really makes a speck of difference, but that's just something that I do. Probably not gonna do a very good job from this angle today. And again, it probably doesn't make a difference at all anyway, but I'm just popping that into the guides. Um, if you're new and you've not uh, used Cricut before, loading a mat, just a little bit of pressure, curl it up before you hit the, the load button and it's gonna load perfectly for you each and every time. And now we'll wait for our flashing C to start. Um, there we go. Now, the first thing that it's gonna do is the sensor is gonna come on and it's going to read those registration marks. And those registration marks are gonna be what tells the Cricut specifically where to cut. Um, so they're really important. They really need to be black. So if you're running out of ink on your printer, you may need to go over them with a Sharpie. Um, some other things as well, I'm in a, you know, a, a, my craft room office, it's just a, it's a lovely day outside. I've got some daylight coming in, I've got a light up here. Um, it's not overly bright. Um, if you are finding some of the sensors that maybe not reading um, uh, correctly, you can close the lid, maybe turn off the lights, make it a little bit darker. You can try that as well. Um, the other thing you need to consider if you're using glossy uh, substrate, the glossiness can reflect the light back up into the sensor and that can cause um, some confusion as well. So be mindful of that. I know a lot of people want to do uh, printable glossy stickers and they do quite successfully, um, but that would be something to be to be mindful of. The other thing, while it's doing its now cutting, I will show you as well, if I go, I oh, can't uh, actually, I'll show up a, another design space window. 
There is the ability as well. So, oh, what's happened there? Um, did I just pause it? So I've confused it. No, I don't want to cancel. Ah, I confused it. All right, we're going to have to reject. So this is what happens. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to try, I'm going to keep this project alive. I'm just going to use my unload button. Or I'm going to click cancel, maybe. <laughs> uh, I'm going to cancel that and try and unload this. So this is what happens. The machine, um, I've lost the connection. I open up a new window uh, mid-cut and I think I've upset the apple cart. So let me just try and reset this. I'm just going to cancel that. Let's uh, turn my machine off and we'll try and turn it back on again and it's now ejecting my mat um, so wait for that to come out and now I'm just going to repeat the step steps in design space so apologies for that I'm going to click make it I'm going to click continue now I've already printed this, so you can see on the right hand side, so on the left it says center printer, on the right hand side it says I've already printed, so that's what I'm going to choose. I'm going to choose printable vinyl, uh, and then we're going to go through that step again. So for cutting wise, it should just cut exactly in the same spot, so that shouldn't be a problem. Um, so we'll just load it up again, and we'll just, I won't open up a new window. Um, but what I wanted to show you, and I will try and show you after this, is that there is the ability to do a, um, a um, uh, not configuration, what's the word I'm searching for? Someone put it in the comments. <laughs> uh, print thing, ca calibration. <laughs> so there's a calibration process, you print a plain sheet of paper with some designs on it, uh, with some squares and lines, and then you put it in the machine, follow all the steps on the um, uh, screen, and that will help also just um, you know improve the accuracy of your printing cut. But again, if you've got any questions, let me know. More than happy to answer all of those. So let's jump into the comments. Um, no more comments. Awesome. All right, guys. So now it's going to do the cutting. And then we'll do the big reveal and then we're done. Now, next Thursday, so I normally say Australian Eastern Daylight Savings Time. I don't need to say that anymore because Daylight Savings is over. So 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Thursday. I'll be live again on you, here on YouTube um, for Cricket for Australians. And I'm going to do something really, really fun. I'm a little bit nervous because I've never done it before. Um, but, you know, why not? <laughs> um, I'm going to be putting infusible ink onto uh, aluminium sheets so these are cricket aluminium sheets you can get them from craft online and i'm going to do a, a little an anzac day project in honor of my i think the other day i said great great grandfather but i think it's great grandfather um so we're going to do a, a really cool project and uh, hopefully you can join me for that as well. And then next Sunday, I'll be live again at 11 a.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time, and I'm gonna be doing uh, two aprons. So I've got an apron from Ikea and an apron from Cafe Create, and I'm, which you should check out, they're a Blanks company, they're fabulous. Um, uh, I'm gonna do two aprons, one that's a little bit fun and one that's a little bit uh, more mature, we'll say. So I'm gonna thinking about the design, I'm not sure if I'll look at a monogram or what I'm gonna do, um, but one of them's gonna be a little bit cheeky, which, uh, which should be fun as well. So hopefully you can join me for those. Um, what's everyone doing for the rest of the day? Uh, Janet, if you're catching up now, don't worry, you can uh, watch the replay. Um, I'll also link a uh, card as well to uh, the print and cut stickers I did with the where I printed, but then I also used the Cricut foil tool to embellish them and they were stunning. So, so pretty. Um, so I'll link that up here. It's on my YouTube channel if you want to check it out, but I'll link it up for everyone who's watching the replay. Oh my God, stunning. Uh, definitely recommend you look at that one as well. Um, hope you got something out of this. Um, again, hit the like button, give me a thumbs up. And again, if you're not subscribed, make sure you, you subscribe. Janet, it's got, you've got family over. Did you draw the short straw or do you love cooking? So we've finished our cutting now. And uh, <laughs> Wendy's making, <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Wendy. Wendy's gonna be making uh, stickers, of course. Um, thanks Karen, I'm glad 
that you're enjoying them. And um, Suzette's off to family Easter as well. All right, so let's just uh, go to the overhead um, and I'll get my weeding tool and we're just gonna grab a corner and just pick up the corner and reveal our little stickers, which is so cute. That little offset as well. There we go, get rid of our rubbish and pop that down there. Um, and there we go. There are our little stickers. Hopefully you can see the offset around them. Um, but I just think they're really fun. I think um, my partner's going to really enjoy those. I think they're really super, super cute. So again, hope you got something out of that. I uh, look forward to seeing you next time. Uh, it's nice and short today as well. Um, crafting as much as you can. You go for it, Karen. You go, girl. And uh, Brenton's uh, going to make some bullet journals. I, um, I've looked into that. I'm not a journaler, um, but something about the bullet journaling um, does uh, appeal to me. So thanks for joining me. Have a wonderful Easter. I'm going to see you next week and uh, take care. Bye.